previously on D&D. We learn the backstory of our characters and recap where we were. What will happen this time? Will we ever figure out why Brett's staring at his crotch repeatedly? Will Billy look at the camera centrally more for us? Find out on today's episode of D&D, &D, episode 2. So, I'll cast speak to animals and, um, I will ask them, uh, Oh, oh, you know what? I'll let them know about, um, what happened in town, and I'll, I'll let them know what's going, happened, what is going on, what's their story. We'll go ask them. <laughs> okay. Yeah, go ahead. Ask them. Ask them. Say, um, say what you're going to say to them. Okay. Um, we've been through quite a few trials on our journey, and we mean no harm. Um, I am also a fellow druid, and we have come on the mission first from Barbosa, who has abandoned us. As soon as you say that, the great ape stands up and goes, goes furious and starts to beat his chest and screaming. Mention the woman's name. Oh. But we are also here um, because of what's her name? What was her last name? I can't remember her name. <laughs> oh, God. Does anyone remember her name? What are we talking about? Yeah. The lady who died. Oh, the shopkeeper. The, the potion shopkeeper was also. Your lady. The, in town. In town. Uh, we made such a as, uh, name as, for the pan as you see the. Um, as you see the ape still writhing mad, going going crazy, the panther jumps in front of him and, and says something, like wars at him. He calms him down and he looks, and as as you see this panther, this beautiful panther, just standing in front of you, you then see a woman appear. And it's the woman that shot me. Oh my gosh! She's alive! <laughs> Lady, who's this? <laughs> she was presumed dead, melted in her wall, mutilated. She stood me up Thanks on for following me. Thanks for filling me in, Rowan. Yeah, she, she, stood, she stood Billy up on a date. I was so pissed. But uh, you mean Varys? She looks at you. And she, uh, it was a legit question Thor was asking. I just joined the party. I want to know what's okay. up. <laughs> <laughs> so, good to... so she looks. Uh, she looks at you, and she doesn't. She doesn't say too much, but what, what she does says, and what she does say is, um, that name that I told you does not. My druid name is sacred, and I do not share it with anyone. So she has chosen not to tell you her real name. Thank God, just took me off. Uh, she says, but you may call me Doreen, as that was the name I told you. That's good. That was. That was. Can we write this down? Yeah. Put it in our traveler log. I got it, please. I got it. In the yeah, traveler he's, got log. Tra he's got the traveler log. Damn it, why didn't you put that down? Because I just made this. <laughs> he's a smart man. Doreen ain't. <laughs> Apparently Doreen not. Doreen ain't dead. I have, I have Druin still wrecking shit. <laughs> Doreen ain't dead. <laughs> so, she, uh, Doreen, as you guys all know, looks and she speaks as you did with two animals. <clears throat> and um, she, uh, as as you see, she 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 speaks to the she to the to the other animals. They all start to deform back into their original form. The ape was actually Goliath oh, standing okay. there in front of you. Um, the uh, the brown bear was a very hardy dwarf. The panther was Doreen and. I said one more animal. Then I'm a boar. Or no, I switched it for an ape. No, lion. Yeah, I said, a, oh, and a lion, and a lion, and the lion. Lion, and panther, ape, in, and boar. You see, or bear. You see a man, a uh, uh, very tall, uh, broad-shouldered man with with a like a lion's mane around his head, and they all Dead. bow to him. And uh, they all rise, and the uh, the man he's he's not old, but you can tell he's very seasoned. He's he's uh he's got salt and pepper hair, 
very, very sturdy and strong, chiseled, if you will. And uh, he, he has seen his battles, and he's, he's earned his scars. Um, uh, he, has, he has a couple scars on his face, not, not too gruesome, but you can tell that it was because of a battle. So, as, um, as you guys stand there, you guys look at him, Doreen looks at you, and she, she gestures for you guys to bow. I bow. Thor bows. He takes the takes the hint to bow. So we have Thor bowing. Torin decides to bow as well. You know him to be chief. Okay, then I will bow. The way of the druid. You bow in the respect of uh, as a druid. Billy, what do you do? I so don't want to bow. Just to see what the hell happens. Great. You sure you didn't see that? I kind of do, but I kind of don't. I bow, but don't do it. Not okay. <laughs> so he doesn't know that. I just, I just, as as know. he looks, as he looks, we told the DM, so the DM knows, so he knows, damn it. Yeah, dummy. Yeah. So as as this all happens, not so smart, are you? <laughs> he, he looks around, and he sees everyone, and he sees that um, Nix is is. The most respectful because he sees that she is a druid and she understands what his rank is and what his status is. And then he looks at the elf, not the um, the ranger. The... <laughs> I was like, "What did I do?" <laughs> and everything. What he does next does what he does next surprises all of you. No, you both look up. Not you, the wizard. I know you don't respect the druids, but I respect you, so I damn demand the same respect I do with his finger in your face. Can you do that for me, son? Respect isn't the man that it's earned. <sighs> you have a lot to learn, son. He turns away and he says, "Follow us to our to our tribe." You guys decide to follow. You win. So. I follow. There's your respect. <laughs> <laughs> He's right behind the chief. Okay. Yeah. So in the line is Billy, um, Brett's right behind Billy, and then Dio, Nix, uh, and then. Um, Zephora and Torn. Torn's at the end. Oh, I'm so worried. I'm so sad. I'm so dead. So Doreen is walking next to you, and you guys are kind of like in a single file, but then the druids that were there are kind of lying. It's kind of almost like a prison line, but you guys are free to walk away if you choose. <laughs> so Doreen is walking next to you next, and, you know... Welcome back, Marshall. No worries. You see her very intently looking straight ahead and not really paying any attention to anything. So, you guys are still walking. It's about like 10 minutes into walking. You want to talk to the druids? You want to, you just want to keep walking? You will attempt to shiver. Are we all set with uh, inventory? Yeah, what you have is what you have. <laughs> like nobody needs any supplies or anything? Um, okay. Tor, uh, Torin has a bag of holding, and what that is, Brett, is um, Brett. whatever you have, you can give it to Torin, and he'll put it in his bag, and he, it can hold anything. It doesn't have to be set He's a pack meal. And uh, as long as you can think of it and reach in, you can pull it out. Okay, so he's the pack meal. Yeah, the and it's weightless, so he doesn't feel any of the weight. So you you can literally put him. a giant. Can I hop yeah, in there but you would die no and way. have him carry me around like Yoda and just talk to him? Nine minutes. Nine minutes. After nine minutes, you would... Well, I'm not saying suffocate myself, poke my head out, be like, oh, do a front No, no, I would, have to, I would have to pull you out. I would have to think about you pull you out. Okay. Otherwise, you can't say that. Alrighty, okay. Okay, alright, alright. You right. go in with like a, a potion bottle for breathing, so you keep that in your mouth, but it's going inside. Oh, you we should remember that in case we need to sneak into yeah, somewhere. That's right. I love you. <laughs> Trojan horse it. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Oh, I'm 
don't you ask the jurors what, what, what was that? Why did you, why did you, what that meat pancake that was at that house? So, Nick <laughs> asked Doreen what happened. Uh, Doreen, what you guys don't know, is Doreen was found dead in her shop, totally mutilated and torn to pieces, um, which actually made uh, Warren, who found her, very sick and ill and very traumatized because he had never seen anything that gruesome. She looks at you and she okay. says, Foolish druid woman, do not ask what ye do not want. And she turns and looks back up front as you walking. And you see that her pendant is still on her neck. Well, we're trying to bury that body. We're trying to do it a Jewish burial. That would be a good time to ask what would be the real relationship with her. Should we ask the king for assistance for the, uh, the hobgoblin monster thingy. You you try to get the king's you try to get the chief's attention, but he is not focused on talking to you at the moment. He is just on walking. Okay. You can probably okay. talk to one of the other druids. Maybe the Goliath. <laughs> the Goliath is standing next to the other Goliath. Okay. Who's the one that got mad at us? We should avoid that him. Was yeah, that's fine. Uh, we should Goliath avoid him. Is not happy. Because as soon as we said Barbosa, he got pissed. <laughs> oh, I don't... I, okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> I work for Barbosa. I don't know his motives. I just do what I'm asked. <laughs> so, after, after 30, 30 more minutes, you guys get to the, you get to the, to the town or the tribe, and you see very, very happy young children. You see a, a thriving economy. You see... A group of people just being happy. These these people are not a threat. You see them to be loving and caring, and they love one another. You see nothing of hostility. You see no spears. You see no axes. You see no war. And as you keep walking through, everyone looks at you. Uh, they look at Nyx with a higher regard, and they see her as normal. But they see the Goliath and. You see some of the children look at you in curiosity. You see some of the parents' mothers uh, a little fearful. They see the the tiefling, and the kids are very curious because it's their size and their age. So they're very curious about who this is. They they look at the the two elves. The elves are pretty normal because there's a bunch of elves around. And then they look at the dragonborn, and everyone seems to cower before the dragonborn. I'm gonna turn blue. Okay. You turn blue, and everyone looks at you. That's just something that she yeah, can do. She can turn, she can change. That's all. Awesome. I'm just gonna turn blue. No big deal. She can, she can go from green to gray to blue. No, I just like that. Just always like pa. <laughs> it's my head. Children, think of your child. Stay close. So I use continual flame and burn this entire thing up. <laughs> you better be kidding. Because I will let that happen. I will okay. use water spear and contain him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, so... Regret. I will regret my decision to join this conquest. <laughs> this tent, and you see beautiful colors, lavish. You see a tree, a big giant tree. And you see a throne on that tree. And he goes and he sits down on the throne. And Doreen sits right next to him. Hey, girl. So, I'm smart man. from what you guys, from what you guys see, you see that now it is part of the council. You now have a a front row seat to talk to the chief. This is how their customs work. You cannot talk to the chief unless you are within council with him, and this is council. Unless you are with war or battle, that's the only time you may talk to the chief unless he chooses to speak to you. And this is what their customs are. So now you are able to speak. What what would you guys like to say? He looks at you and says, "Speak, or I will decide thy fate." With a very, I wouldn't say smug. I would say uh, warming smile, young one. We are not about war. We are peaceful druids who will break cell phones if people are using them. 
My bad. Shout out to <laughs> Billy. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, we are not, we are not hostile. I, I assure you, the children here are very peaceful, just like you. Even though it's just like Yes, I can see that very well. Can I whisper something to the group, like sidebar? Um, if you do that, you're gonna have to kind of make like a sleight of hand or stealth because you're standing right in front of him and he's looking at you. Okay. So roll a d20 if you want to do that. Yeah. D20. Oh shit! Okay, I got a two. He sees what you're doing and he hears what you're saying. So what did you want to say? All right, I was just hearing how your people are and seeing how your village is. I didn't want to disrupt it. On our journey, we're trying to um, take down a potential threat to, you know, this other town that we came from. Uh, we were going to uh, ask for your assistance, but obviously fighting is not your people's style. So are there any supplies that you could possibly give us to benefit in our journey? I never said we are not hostile. We do fight, but we only do it to protect our own. And you disappear. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I just I meant no disrespect. I just wanted to respect your area, your your civilization. I didn't want to bring any chaos to what you have here. I just wanted to come forth respectively and ask for whatever assistance you may be able to provide us. And as as he says this, as he says this line, he looks directly at Varus and says, respect, uh, and then he looks back at you and says, what is it you look, what are you looking for for me? What can I do? Oh boy. <laughs> From my understanding, you are all Barbosis men. Am I wrong? I'd like to You would not be wrong, sir. But you all can answer. I bow down strong man. I'm smart man. Smart man. I'm strong man. So Brett you answers, you are you are you are correct. Yeah. And what do you say, Billy? You may be Barbosis man, but Little do you know, we all are, are fighting one enemy. People that have attacked Barbosa's area could be attacking your peaceful area, in which I feel like you should help us to preserve what you have here. I don't want that. Uh, D20, you said? Yeah, D20. Oh, okay. I got a five. What'd you get? Did you get? Did you get that five? You got, you got five? five. I got five also. I got a five. I wanted to chime in if I may. Lord. Well, here, here. So he looks at you and he says. What makes you think you know what's best for my tribe? You have yet to even earn my respect, let alone spit and shine my food. I didn't say what was best for you, man. I said what would be the safest for your community in which I respect. And what makes you think you know what's safe because I for saw, my people? Because I saw what they did to Barbosa's and I didn't want them to travel down the road. Your Lordship, I, I am here, I'm here to ask you a question, and my question is, why all of a sudden when Barbosa's, was Barbosa's camp left, or his camp, why did he leave after we returned from the battle, from <coughs> what was it after the, uh, the, 
Um, actually, I'm going to rephrase what I was going to say. I was going to say, originally I was going to ask, with no signs of the Druid people, why was the potion keeper, this, the Doreen, this lady Doreen over here, why was her, what was her role as to her potion shop being attacked? Um, we, are, we are a band of peaceful mercenaries. We are not here to fight. We are here to answer a question as to why they were attacked and as to why the Druids are trying to be removed from this area. Your, your land, your, your village is filled with what seems like peace and prosperity. Why is there such a, why is there a sign that people of the military do not want to do it in that small, small country of quarry that we left? What is the significance? Or, and we mean no disrespect, but why are you being driven out? Goliath, you're very long-winded, but I feel the respect. And as he says that, he gives you a glance once again. Pass. I pat Rowan on the back. He he looks at you with more kinder eyes. Do you not know what it means to be a druid in this part? It means death. We follow a cause that no one, I mean no one, would bring upon their worst enemy in this area. The, the King of Quarry is wanting to expand his kingdom. Not, it's, it's not, we're not attacking anyone. They are killing my people. We've had to move our establishment four times. We are nomadic people, but not like this. We move with the herd. The herd has not moved. We're moving farther and farther away from our herd. And the King of Quarry is killing not just us, but our herd. We are losing valuable resources, and they are taking what is not theirs. We are only merely defending ourselves. And that is what I think is safe for my people. So, to constantly run in fear? What else do I have? Stand and fight. Have you Thank seen you Thank you, the Barnes. people in this village? How, how, yes. how many men have you seen? There's only four of us. Myself included. The Goliath is our most physical one. You all look at the Goliath and he nods with a little, you know, a little strut in his step kind of attitude. You know, being the, the biggest physical specimen there. Well, we were attacked by Hobgoblins that night. On further, I don't want to say investigating, but activities within the town of Quarry, we found no alarms were no alarms were signed. Uh, and, uh, um, Bless you. That's scary. Freaking scary. <laughs> and uh, we encountered. <laughs> Bless you. Of course, Champ Bailey says bless you. <laughs> Michelle says thank you. <laughs> he looks at Doreen, and Doreen looks at um, her husband, and she says, uh, I think they speak of the one that we've been investigating. And he looks at him and goes, Ah. I know who you speak of. Yes, that is who 
body of Talking Venom. That is the one that they made a pact with that they should have not yet. He deals with very dark magic. Magic that I do not even wish on my worst enemy. Though I am a Goliath, he did have an encounter. I do not have any magical power, but I have a sense of dark energy that made my bones shiver. And I am a Goliath. We fell back upon learning of this hobgoblin general. In this edition, really, is a learner you can download the basic rules so of the Coast the website completely free. Oh, really? Cool. Nice. Uh, Merc, do you uh, stream yourself, man, or just uh, just view? Of our original plan to fight, and we're trying to solve this puzzle because now, if you're telling us of the story, not the story, but your life, 